Hi and welcome to our today demo which is about network automation. In today demo we will be uh, doing some testing with both Puppet and Ansible for doing BEM configuration on three different systems. So we have a Linux host, a CentOS 7 which is running free range routing or FRR. We have a Cisco Catalyst 4948 standard traditional switch, which is just based on, you know, uh, standard Cisco iOS software. And also we have a Juniper SRX210 firewall, which is running Juno's operating system from Juniper. Uh, we will be using Ansible for doing the configuration with Juniper and also with the Cisco Catalyst 4948. We will be using Puppet for doing the configuration on FRR and on Cisco Catalyst 4948. Now, if you remember during the course when we were talking about the Puppet and Ansible and the network automation tools, the main difference between the Puppet and Ansible is that Ansible is an agentless uh, system, but Puppet is an agent-based system. So Puppet requires an agent software to do the configuration. So for example, here, when we will be doing the FRR testing in this demo, we will be installing a Puppet agent on this server, on this host, which is hosting our Linux-based free-range routing, the FRR software, and that Puppet agent will be talking to the Puppet server. We will be using that for doing the configuration of the free range routing and injecting few configuration on the routing in the FRR. Now Puppet recently, uh, they have introduced a feature to become agent less for doing some configuration with Cisco iOS devices. Few of them, it's not all of them, but few of them are supported. So in this demo also, we will be using this specific feature of the Puppet Server, Puppet Server and Agent for doing some agent less configuration on the Cisco Catalyst 4948 switch. And also, you know, in the Ansible, Ansible is complete agentless, so we don't need to install any agents on any of these devices. And we will be using the standard modules from Ansible to do the configuration on uh, Juniper and also our Cisco box here. So let's start uh, with with Puppet. We will be doing first the Puppet, uh, doing some configuration of NTP server on the Cisco CAD 4948, which we got here. So let's start and see how this module is going to work. All right, to, to start with, I just search Puppet Cisco iOS in the Google. And the first thing, you know, comes introducing new Cisco iOS module, which is in June 2018. So if I click on this link, it takes us to this announcement from, uh, from Puppet. And it takes us to the uh, information related to this specific module, which has been created for Puppet for uh, for dealing with Cisco iOS devices. Uh, so it's a module called Puppet Lab Cisco iOS, which describes here how to do the installation. And if we uh, go to the wiki page of this project, it takes us to GitHub, where this project actually is hosted. It's from the Puppet Lab Cisco iOS. And here we can get all the information related to this module. So Cisco iOS is a module from the Puppet that can help us to do the configuration of the Cisco iOS based devices or, you know, <clears throat> the standard, it's, it's a kind of traditional uh, networking device which we cannot install any any agent on it. Uh, also, we need to, I have to, now, I have to mention that, you know, in the newer uh, networking devices like the, you know, Nexus OS, you know, there is the ability to install Puppet agents, you know, on those boxes. They come with some kind of uh, Puppet agent and Puppet will be able to manage those devices. But uh, in most of the places where we have traditional networks, you know, mostly they are all aging equipment and we are looking for, you know, in general, any network administrator, network manager, or architect, they are looking for solution to be able to manage any type of networking device, not only specific to the newer networking devices which they support, uh, you know, this kind of agents. And since there is no agent software uh, available for these switches, a Puppet agent will be acting on behalf of that device. So we will have a Puppet agent which is talking to the Puppet server and will be acting, communicating with that switch on behalf of that device. 
Um, so that's how they have solved this problem. So you know, in this demo today, we will have a we will have a single box puppet server, which will also include the puppet agent, and we will use that device to talk to our Cisco uh, Catalyst forty nine forty eight device. Uh, these are some uh, information that you know how we have to do the configuration of the, you know, the the device. You know that's how you know it has to be done as an example. And this also as an example, you know we can do it with using the device manager or just a standard um, configuration file here for the devices. Uh, once we create uh, a device, when we add a new device to the uh, to the Puppet server, we have to sign that certificate. So it generates a certificate. We have to sign it. So these are the steps here, which are related to uh, generating a certificate and signing that certificate. So now for doing the testing, we will have, you know, a configuration file, which is a manifest for doing a specific configuration or telling the Puppet that, hey, Puppet, go and check for the NTP server in this switch which we have and make sure that NTP server is configured with this particular IP address and you know these are the details like the key number and the VLAN interface which is related for that you know uh, that NTP server which has to be used as a source interface this configuration it has to be present on that particular switch so once this manifest is being executed by Puppet, Puppet as a uh, configuration manager or automation tool it goes inside the switch it logs into the switch it search for this specific configuration command which we are looking for if that configuration command is there uh, it will return back it makes sure that you know exact all the parameters are there and if it is not there it will apply that configuration and comes back so that's how uh, the puppet uh, will, will work with the manifest manifest files uh, the configuration which we can apply right now with the, you know, with the Cisco IOS uh, module is not very, uh, you know, it doesn't uh, include all the commands. So only specific commands has been uh, made available, you know, for triple authentication or, you know, there are a few commands, you know, which are, which are available. You can use that for uh, for dealing with Cisco devices and also devices which are mm, used uh, you know the list uh, which has been tested the tested version the tested devices are very limited here that they got 6503 4948 4507 and these two 2950 switches which are available which has been tested so let's go to our um, to our puppet server so our puppet server is sitting here at uh, this particular IP address which we have 291.6211.31 and from here let's start doing the first configuration and doing the configuration of the NTP on this Cisco Catalyst switch which we have here. Okay so let me do SSH to our uh, puppet server which is 192.168.211.31 okay and, and this this machine it includes both puppet server and puppet uh, agent and if we go to slash etc puppet labs you know we've got two folders here puppet and puppet server so i will go to uh, puppet the agent uh, folder so here uh, we've got few files which are uh, the main one actually here is called device.conf uh, in device.conf we have already could do the configuration for this particular switch is called cisco.example.com so this is a device name which we have assigned here and it says this device the type of this device which puppet has to deal with is called cisco ios so by this particular keyword it tells the puppet that hey you have to use that uh, cisco ios module for dealing with this particular device which we have and we have a YAML configuration file, which we have again in the same folder called iOS underscore switch dot YAML, which this file includes some information about uh, the IP address and login credential for connecting to this particular device. Let's have a look at this file as well. So if I do. So <clears throat> this file, the iOS switch YAML, uh, it includes the address. So 192.62.2, this is the IP address of that switch. Uh, the SSH port is 22 and the username, password and secret password, they are all configured here. We can use also um, 
I think we can do uh, with SSH key authentication as well. So we can remove all the username and password and we can just have the uh, SSH keys loaded here for uh, username less without any credential authentication. Just bear in mind that uh, with my uh, with my experience dealing with uh, with older devices, you know, either uh, most of the networking devices which are older, they support uh, older version of the SSH and uh, weaker protocols which are mostly are not compatible with our automation tool so you have to be careful of that and sometimes you need to specify more parameters for whenever we are doing SSH connection in either Ansible or Puppet uh, for the SSH also in some in some situation you have to use the uh, telnet that's something which uh, you need to either uh, you have to upgrade the the software components on the uh, on the networking device to support uh, stronger uh, encryption and authentication algorithms or you have to use the weaker protocol for doing the management so it's either compromise of security or uh, the flexibility here but uh, finally you can find a way always to to make it work so this was the configuration of our uh, the device and the iOS switch YAML file which we have here now when we create this file we can call our puppet agent to do the registration so that registration is already done if I call my puppet server with the uh, argument that CA the certification authority uh, list dash dash all so this shows all the certificate which I have right now in my server and these are all signed so I already have one certificate signed for cisco.example.com which was the device which we have so let's do one thing we can remove this uh, certificate and we can do it again we can change the name also to a better name so let's try to do that now so I will call CA with revoke dash dash cert name space cisco.example.com and now we got that certificate out so we don't have that certificate anymore it's, it's showing revoked here okay now let's put better name on our device which we have so we call it uh we call it uh cisco 49 switch dot appropriate.com dot local and let me save this file now we got the new device we can call puppet to do recertification for the new device which we have so we will be calling the puppet agent for doing this work for us now we call puppet device you can call variables to give us some detail uh, information target is target is cisco 4948 local and by running this command the agent will start sending creating a ssl request for for the device which we have and this request will come to our puppet server on the same device and we need to sign that certificate now so let's give it the time for generating the certificate okay so these zeros is mostly all related to the certificate now if you call puppet server ca list so if i call list without dash dash all these are the requested certificate which are not signed yet and i can sign this certificate with sign and i can use dash dash all because there's the only one certificate here which needs to be signed and it now shows it's successfully signed if i run this command again uh, this will not show me those errors which are related to the uh, to the certificate so it gets connected to the to our Cisco device and these are all the cache files which are being uh, created and and being loaded okay so as you can see uh, the device is loaded uh, now what we will do we will do uh, that NTP configuration on our on our Cisco device so for doing that uh, we need to create a manifest file and we will assign that file to this device for uh, for applying the configuration 
Okay, so it's going back here on the wiki page. So we will use the same configuration uh, statement here, which is the example for doing the configuration of the NTP. I use exactly the same. And let me create uh, a manifest file. We create it here slash root manifest.pp. So it is so this configuration file it creates an NTP server to destination one two three four. It makes sure that it's present uh, with the key number ninety four and the configuration parameters for the command and the source interface of VLAN 42, which we don't have a VLAN 42. I will keep this as VLAN 200 here. I save this file and get back again to slash root here. And we got the uh, manifest.pp here. So now we will call Puppet to do the configuration on the switch to execute this part. Okay, so let me get a, uh, another connection to the switch. So first, let's verify there is no NTP configuration on the switch. So I get another shell here. Uh, let me SSH to the switch at 192.168.2.2. It will ask for the password. And same password is here. Let me do a show run include NTP. So here, as it shows, we don't have any NTP configuration. If I do show NTP, show NTP status, uh, there is no NTP configuration on this switch at all. Okay, so now we can go back here and we can execute our manifest configuration with using Puppet on the switch to see how it will be doing the configuration for us. So for doing that, we will say, we will call puppet agent to run on the device target is target is Cisco 4948 local. Now we will specify dash dash apply manifest.pp now if i execute this command the puppet here it uses the ssh to connect to the switch and it looks for that configuration uh, statement for the ntp which we have there so it says compile catalog for for the environment and then it says i was looking for the ntp server ensured it is there and ntp server creation finished in 0 0.15 seconds and applied the catalog. Now let's have a look at the switch and see what has happened here. So on the switch side, let's do again, show run includes NTP and we can see this command has been applied. So NTP server 1234, key number 94, source VLAN 200 prefer, that, that configuration has been applied. Now let's create another NTP server and delete this NTP server. That's also another thing we can do. If I go back here and we change our uh, manifest file, uh, let's create, let's do another one, 10.10.10.10. .10 and if I apply the same, so this command creates another NTP server on our, on our Cisco box on the switch itself. And if I check here, I will be able to see now we got two NTP servers configured on this switch. Now to make sure that the NTP server this one is removed, we can use again our puppet, the same thing we use uh, one, two, three, four. We will here, we will make sure it is absent. So the absent keyword, it tells Puppet that, hey, on this switch, I want to make sure that there is no configuration of the NTP server with the IP address of 1234 that has to be disabled. Now, if we go back here and if I do this part, you will see that, you know, that NTP server 1234 is not there anymore. So you can do, uh, you can use this puppet for doing the configuration compliance to make sure all the switches. So imagine that you have thousands of the switches uh, in your network, and you want to apply the same configuration everywhere. And you know, using these commands and applying this manifest, you can create uh, even 
using using Chrome, you can make sure that you know they are always having a steady uh, compliance configuration. So no one, if anyone if in is going and changing any of the configuration, you can make sure they are all gone back to the to the specific configuration which you have created earlier. So let's go back to our drawing. So this was our uh, puppet to the configuration on the uh, NTP on our Cisco Catalyst switch. So we have done this. Our next example is to use the Ansible to get the JSON output of the routing table from this switch. So we'll be using Ansible to get the routing table output from our Catalyst 4948. So let's start dealing with Ansible now. Let's see, now Ansible is just it's an agentless uh, system. So I have a host here at this IP address which has the Ansible installed. So it's a CentOS 7 and Ansible has been loaded there. We will be using Ansible for uh, to deal with this uh, to this device. Now to get the JSON output, you know, there are multiple different uh, Ansible modules also for uh, for working with networking devices like Cisco. And but we need we need to get the JSON output. So JSON is a parse configuration. Whenever we do a show, you know, IP route on a on a on a router or any device, the output which comes out is just a text output, right? It doesn't have any proper format. For parsing it properly, we need to be in a proper parse format like JSON or XML. So we need to use a module which can provide us uh, JSON output. So let's have a look here that, you know, I was uh, just searching Cisco, uh, Ansible Cisco iOS. You know, there are different modules available from uh, from Ansible for uh, for dealing with Cisco. You know, iOS config, you know, it's a, it's a module which is provided by Ansible, I think. And you can use that for injecting configuration or reading from configuration from device. You know, it shows all the uh, parameters. Uh, but we will be using uh, another module which we can uh, use it for providing uh, a parsed JSON output from from the from the switch itself. So we use the uh, NTC, and let's have a look here. That you know this is the NTC uh, module for Ansible. So this module is a multi-vendor Ansible module for network automation. So it includes uh, modules and templates for different uh, networking devices, not only related to Cisco. And we will be uh, using uh, the NTC Ansible for for this uh, for this demo. So we need to clone that repository which is showing here the NTC Ansible. And let's get connected now to the to the new device which we have to our to our Ansible server. Okay, so let me get a new you can use the existing uh, connection we have. Let's create a new tab. So this is our puppet and from here we do the SSH to our Ansible server, which is 192.168.211 watt. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, 33. So I got the SSH key loaded, so everything, so I get the uh, access to our Ansible and Ansible dash dash version. Uh, we are running Ansible version 2.6.1 here. Now for <clears throat> using Ansible, Ansible is very simple. It got also it's similar to Puppet. It got a host file, host inventory file, which is located at. Okay, so let me view this file, the host file. Uh, in the beginning, these are just a uh, uh, standard default configuration of Ansible host file. From here, these are all of our configuration for this demo today. So we have a Cisco iOS device which we have created here. This is the IP address of that device. Username, password, and secret I have all added here. So you can also, with Ansible, you can uh, do the uh credential less authentication using ssh keys so that also is something which you can consider instead of putting username and password clear text here for for security also here i have a juniper uh, all you know call device and this is the ip address of our juniper firewall which we have here which we will be using in the next demo and these are all the configuration for the juniper side and but this is just the configuration which we will be doing now in this demo so the Cisco iOS device is defined, the IP address, username, password, and the enable secret key. They are all defined here. Let me exit from here. Now we have created a folder here, slash Ansible, and we have a folder called network. So in the network folder, which we have here, I have already cloned 
the folder git clone the folder uh, the ntc ansible so this is already done so ntc ansible has been completely copied here uh, in the folder which we have the ntc uh, ansible and these are the templates which are all located here so just for information you know if you go if i go to the template so these are all the ntc templates you see lots of devices here so these are all the commands which are supported by ntc ansible from you know it supports Palo Alto devices you know VMware NSX Wyata you know you know few configuration on the uh, show parsing actually these are the parsing of the output for Wyata Palo Alto Ubiqt Dell Force 10 we got iOS XR we got Cisco wireless controller some uh, some show commands we got Nexus OS we got Cisco iOS show commands and a few of them brocade checkpoint arista so this is a good library which has been deployed and we can use this library for doing our work now we have a configuration file here which i've created already cisco 4148.yaml so let me view this file here uh, so this this yaml file this is a configuration template of uh, uh, ansible so this is how an ansible playbook looks like so it has a name and the host so the host here it reflects to the host tag which we created inside the host file inside our configuration file in the host configuration file and the task here is to run the ntc show command so ntc show command is the module name you know that uh, we use so we have already installed also the ntc uh, module already now for this configuration here i have a specified telnet because the switch which i have is not supported by the the python uh, ssh library so python uses paramico uh, ssh modules which is not compatible with the older uh, you know open ssh uh, server which is located on the on the switch which currently we have and the platform here is the Cisco iOS. So Cisco iOS tells the device, tells the Ansible that, hey, you have to use the Cisco iOS module. And these are the username and password, which will be picked up from the configuration, from the device's configuration. And here also we have a specified a template directory, which is that slash Ansible network NTC templates template. So this is the where those configuration files, which I was showing you earlier from all the vendors were very located. And this is for showing back the results that, you know, what is happening in the routing table. So the command here is the important part. So show IP route. So running this uh, Ansible playbook should give us a complete structure JSON formatted IP routing table from, from our switch. So let's get out of this file now and let me let's do our ssh to the switch first and check the routing table then we will execute this file using ansible to see what uh what routing table ansible is going to show us okay so i have the connection here to the switch itself let me do show ip route and as you can see the ip routing table here we got four connected routes which are for these three subnet and we got the static default route also pointing to to our default gateway here so we got one two three four four routes in our in our routing table in this format which is provided by the show output so what we are expecting we are expecting a complete parsed structured formatted uh, json formatted output of this information inside the J in the json format when we run the uh, when we run our playbook here now to execute this we call ansible playbook and we say cisco 40 on 48 the yaml file which we have and let's see what's going to come back okay so still working and here we go let me browse a little bit up okay so it says task is completed and this is the information so the response and we got the first one so distance empty mask 24 and the network 192.168.211.0 VLAN 211 and uh, it's a C which means a connected network so this is our first entry in the routing table the second entry third entry 
and the fourth entry here. So this is our default route. So distance of one, network zero, 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 and it's a static route, which is pointing to this particular uptime, to particular uh, gateway. So this is a complete parsable output, which we can use it in our, in our application for, you know, analyzing the routing tables. So if you need to analyze, you know, routing tables, you can easily use Ansible, you know, this NTC module to quickly parse all the routing tables of thousands of the switches at the same time using, using, uh, using few scripts. Let's do another command. You know, there are a few commands which are uh, available there. Let's see. Uh, what are the other commands? So if I check in my templates and look for Cisco iOS show whatever. So we got show show running configuration show spanning tree. Let's do let's do let's do show VLAN here. We have a show VLAN uh, template as well. So if I go to our uh, Cisco forty one forty eight. Let me let me copy another file. You know, uh, we copy this file and we call it underscore VLAN Cisco forty one forty eight VLAN YAML, and we modify this file now. And here, instead of show IP route, I will use show show VLAN here. Save the file and let's do uh, Ansible playbook call cisco 4148vlan.yaml now let's see what information is going to come back we are expecting that all the vlan information to be coming back as a structured format from from this command okay so information is back let's have a look so we got our interfaces and we got uplink to the firewall we got again some other information so these are all of our VLAN information. Let's have a look at, you know, the switch itself. If we run the command without that. <clears throat> so the show VLAN, it shows us the VLAN one, which are configured for all of these interfaces. Then we got VLAN number two, which is uplink to the firewall. It has the port number gig one slash 48. So this is our, uh, the VLAN 2 information. So VLAN ID number 2, this is VLAN ID number 1 with all of these interfaces. So just imagine that parsing all of these details which is coming in this format, it's really painful. But this module just makes everything ready with parsed all of the information ready for, ready for, you know, for doing a deployment, extra deployment. Okay, so backing back to our uh, drawing here. So we finish doing Ansible for uh, getting a JSON output from the routing table of 4148 here. So that we have done that. Now in the next action, we will be using Ansible to get the facts. So facts means information or show version or all the details of our Juniper SRX210 firewall here at this IP address. So we will be using uh, Juniper Junos module to um, to generate this information from Ansible using Ansible. So let's get into our uh, browser first. So I go to uh, Ansible Galaxy. So Ansible Galaxy is a place where all the uh, Ansible modules has been uploaded there. And you can use this uh, Ansible Galaxy to find modules that, that, that is required for, for, for you to, to manage a device. So here in galaxyansible.com, I go to search and I will search for, uh, for Juniper. So I just search Juniper. And you know, there are a few Ansible modules from, uh, for Juniper. So let me use this one, which is from Juniper itself. And it just tells me that, hey, you just do Ansible Galaxy install Juniper Juno. So if I use this command on my, on my Juniper, uh, on my Ansible box, Ansible Galaxy install Juniper Junos. So this command will be installing and installing the Junos uh, module for Ansible, and it will make my Ansible here to be able to talk to a Juniper device. And if we go back here, uh, there are some uh, documentation also, you know, readme information, which will help us, you know, there are a few commands and information that, 
uh, sub, sub, sub modules actually for Juniper Junos, you know, command, config, facts, so retrieve facts from a Junos device. This one, we will be using this to get our, to get the information from the firewall, which we are, which we are dealing with now. Uh, SRX cluster, so this is for adding, removing chassis cluster configuration or, uh, or, or other stuff. Um, the prerequisite for, uh, for using the, uh, Juniper Junos module is there are a few other modules which is required like JXML Lease and Pi uh, Pi Junos EZNC e e and the Python and Ansible version also. So these two modules I have already installed using with pip commands on my Python. So my Python already uh, has these modules and the the Juniper Junos modules on the Ansible should be able to work. Now let's get back here on our uh, on our system. So I get out of this folder. I'm still in our Ansible folder. We have already created the te Junos test YAML. Let me edit this file. <coughs> Junos test. So this Ansible file, uh, uh, it's a get facts. So it calls Junos all. So Junos all is a key value, is a keyword which is linking us to the host file, inventory host file of Ansible which we have. And on all of those devices where we have this tag, it runs and it generates this information. So the the host name, the username and password, it will get all of this information from from the configuration or the host file, and it runs Junos get facts. And finally, it prints out all the facts for us here. So let's have a look. Also, again, relook at the, the the devices or inventory file. So let's see what Juniper the, the Junos all keyword is located. If I do a nano on slash etc ansible and hosts. Now here, if you remember, we have this configuration, Junos all, we have the IP address of our firewall, which is 172.16.172.1. We have username and password also here, which is very basic username and password set here. And we have also Junos all vars. So these are the variables, uh, Juniper user and Juniper password for Junos all uh, keyword. So whatever devices we have here, these are the extra variables which we have supplied for, for, these, for these devices. So the username and password I have set here as Juniper username and Juniper password. So this username and password will be used for connecting from, from Ansible to the to our Juniper box. Again, you will be able to find method for removing all of this username and password just using the SSH key authentication. And to, you know, for security, you can remove all of this clear text username and password simply. So these are all here for, for making the demo and just to show you how, how it works. Let me get out of this file now. Okay, so let's execute this command now. We call our Ansible playbook run for uh, Juno's test YAML. Let's see. So what we are expecting, we are expecting all the facts information from our Juniper firewall to come back as a structured JSON formatted information. And here we go. So our script, it went inside our firewall and it said, these are all the information. So this is our routing engine zero. Last reboot was based on, you know, the power cycle. The model number is uh, routing engine Juniper SRX 210BE uh, status is okay. Uptime information, so everything is formatted in JSON. So this is like an output of uh, uh, one of the commands to show output on the on the Juniper box, which is very properly formatted and it's coming back into our into our system. So similar to this, you can run any other command which is supported by the module like the show routing table or show the BGP neighbors and you can use all of this information inside your inside your simple programs for for doing for doing any analysis work or doing any any kind of configuration using Ansible. So Ansible does not need again 
doesn't need any agent to be installed so it just uses SSH or Telnet or any protocol which you are specifying to connect to that device it uses those modules to execute and do some configuration or generate some output it formats the output in the proper format in the readable in the computer readable format like this and very easily parsed and you can use it for for many different reasons and for many different configurations so this was our uh, ansible demo um, now we have so we finished this part ansible to get the facts of the juniper srx210 so we were able to use the juniper junos module get the outputs parse it inside the json format and have the, all, all the information back here in our ansible now our last part of this demo is to use puppet to configure a route on site this FRR host which we have and this host here this is a uh, CentOS 7 it doesn't have Puppet so we will be installing Puppet agent here and we will be connecting our Puppet agent to our Puppet server and we will do the configuration of the Quagga or the FRR inside this device so let's start with doing the basic stuff here inside our FRR host so it's very important for uh, the time synchronization so whenever you are dealing with puppets you have to make sure the the puppet server the puppet agents they are all very well synchronized having very well synchronized clock so first of all i will make sure that the frr host which we have here that is it has the ntp client and it is receiving the correct time from the from the ntp server so let's first get uh, get access to our frr host and start from there okay so i got another console here available and let me ssh to as root at 192.168.211.151 which is our frr host okay so the first thing i will use yum to install uh the ntp so the package is called ntp date okay so ntp date is being installed and now i will do the configuration for synchronization of the clock we call ntp date it is 0 .centos pool .ntp org, which will synchronize our clock to the uh, to the servers in ntp uh centos ntp servers okay so that is also done so that's the correct time now we got yep so system ctl restart ntp date actually it's the same package which we installed and let me enable that also so it automatically starts okay so our date is okay okay now to install the latest version of the puppet i will use these comments to to download from the yum puppet labs to download the uh, puppet version 5 for which is for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 or the CentOS 7 so this installed uh, the repository for for puppet here and now we will use yum to install puppet agents so it gets the puppet version 5 okay which is now being installed okay so now we got our puppet agent installed already so now we can start doing some uh, configuration to connect our puppet agent to the puppet server okay now we do some modification on our uh, slash etc puppet labs puppet puppet.conf so this is our puppet agent configuration which will be linked this to our puppet server so here we have to add some more information inside this file I have already these details prepared and so we call them name here and certification name for this device we call it frr.arpoveil.local and the server name is our pop puppet master.arpoveil.local and the environment is production and run interval is one hour so this configuration file these two very key information is what is this agent is going to be called which is called frr and who is our puppet server so once we start the puppet agent it will communicate to this server and it will ask for generating a certification for 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 this name which we have here so before doing anything first let me make sure we can resolve the puppet master let 
me just do this and so this is our puppet master let me try that again uh, okay so it's pinging so it's being resolved so the puppet master is resolvable uh, now let's continue our our connectivity between the puppet agent and puppet server so we just need to call puppet oh this is not available you can call that using the full name you normally start in uh, puppet labs puppet bean and puppet okay and this our service service of puppet ensure it is running enable equal to true so this tells our puppet agent that we need we need to start the puppet service and here we got the year the certificate name must be lowercase okay so we cannot use the frr as the capitals okay no problem we can quickly modify that file which is slash etc puppet labs puppet uh, puppet conf and we change these to lowercase frr and we run this command again so this command it enables the the puppet service and it generates a certificate request to the puppet server so the puppet service is showing that hey i have started the service now we have to go back to our puppet master server here let me restart the communication looks like our ssh has been died can close this and let me open a new tab here and ssh2 through tab 192.168.211.31 which is our puppet server now if i call puppet server ca list this should show us a new request which is not here okay so here actually this command is showing that the puppet agents uh, is running here but here on the server it looks like it's not any uh, there is no certificate request has arrived so uh, let's run this command the puppet uh, agent dash dash test so this should give us some information that why our agent is not sending any request ah uh, it says fail to open tcp connection to our puppet master on port 8140 so port number 8140 is where the puppet uh, is listening is working on the puppet server so let's see what's going on is our server this is the puppet server uh, let's see is it listening on port number yeah 8140 java is listening on it which is our our puppet and so it might be our our firewall let's see oh yeah so the firewall here doesn't allow uh the port number 428140 to be allowed so we can quickly enable that okay uh, input critical tcp destination port uh destination port 8140 jump accept so this command tells our IP tables that hey if there is any packet coming on 8140 or 8140 you have to allow that to let it come it should be somewhere now let's run our command here again and let's see so the test okay so now certificate request i think has been sent so let's run the puppet server ca list and we got the new request yeah so frr.arpoway.local this is a new request now we have to sign that so we'll say ca sign again we will use dash dash all because we have only one request so uh, we sign that request so now our communication between the puppet server and puppet agent has been established so our puppet master and our frr they should be able to uh to communicate with each other let's get back to our frr now okay so in our frr host 
our VTYSH is working and we have the default configuration of the BGP which we applied uh, earlier and uh, let's see what are our daemons running uh, slash etc for our daemons uh, we have we have zebra running we have BGP running and we have static static routes also running so these are the modules that we have so now to make our puppet master to be able to control our quagga or FRR here we need to download the module here inside our uh, puppet master so let's go to our uh, Puppet Forge. So Puppet Forge is something similar to Ansible Galaxy. It's all the modules which are available for Puppet are loaded here. I will search here for Quagga or FRR because FRR is based on Quagga. I use the same. So this one is, it looks like it had the most of the downloads. So I use this one. And to install that module, we will use this command. Puppet module install, you know, uh, this particular module let me copy this completely it didn't get copied and I will paste this command here inside our puppet master so puppet master it installed it downloaded and installed so this is already installed so we got the puppet puppet module for for FRR now to manage this host we need to create a configuration file here for uh, for for Quagga or FRR. So in this module, let me, uh, here it's a complete information about, you know, all the all the supported modules and configuration which we can apply on the on the Quagga. So it supports BGP, OSPF, and, you know, all the, uh, you know, most of the configuration are all supported here. We will do a basic configuration of a static route. We will put a static route towards null zero for just one IP subnet and we will use one of these examples which is here so for for doing that uh, we need to go to uh, you know in etc code environments production because now we are working on the production environment and we have uh, a module uh, which is for let's see if that module is downloaded so in the module list, now I got Quagga module. So before that, we didn't have the Quagga module. Now we got the Quagga module already running. Now I will go to, you know, in production, we have a folder called manifest. So in manifest folder, here we get the, the manifest for, for the node, which we are doing the configuration. So let me edit the node file. So nano nodes.pp. So in the node file, this is what I have already created. So for the node frr.appaway.local, we have we have this parameter which is Quagga static route. So this parameter creates a static route towards this destination 10.0.0.24. It will ensure it is present and the next half will be configured as null zero. So this is all the configuration which we are going to inject inside inside our Quagga using the puppet. Uh, so this file is saved. This file is saved inside uh, manifest. So each each node will have will have a uh, will have a definition here. So we can have multiple nodes here for different configuration. You can have a node for for enabling or configuring the you know Apache or MySQL server or anything. But this host will have the configuration for Quagga. Now we will go to. Uh, we will go back to our FRR host and as as we already checked so if we run the VTYSH we do the show run we don't have any any static route configured here so we have only the BGP route configured and so from here we will be running our puppet agent to get the final configuration from for this host from the puppet uh, from the puppet master server so we will call puppet uh, agent dash t here and so it gets the, the information and the details from the server and applying the configuration so it puts a version also for the configuration now here we got a notice that quagga static route created 
So that configuration has applied and static route has been configured. Let's go back to VTYSH and here if I do a show run, now we see that static route is created here. So Puppet was able to inject this route inside the Quagga or our FRR, you know, using just a configuration file or compliance file which we applied there. So this was about uh, the last part, you know, using our Puppet to do the full configuration on the FRR. So FRR was just a basic uh, standard uh, Linux-based machine. So you saw how to install the Puppet agent, uh, connect the Puppet agent to the Puppet server, generate the certificate, sign the certificate, and inject the, uh, the configuration file using just the basic manifest file which we created inside the node. So it's a little bit was different from what we did for the uh, for that catalyst switch. So catalyst switch is different because it's uh, uh, agentless uh, method for using Puppet, but this is an agent based. So we use the agent for uh, pulling the la latest configuration. Um, in, in, in network automation, the preferred option is always to you know, try to keep keep it simple. Use a single. Try to use a single platform for your for your automation for your DevOps. So you know, you can use both Ansible, Puppet, you know, Python, and you know, Ruby, which which uh, which Puppet is using. Uh, Puppet will be very useful whenever you try to create a compliance and make sure that you know this particular configuration is always there on your networking device, on your switches, router. Uh, or any device and uh, it's not getting changed. So if by, by mistake someone goes to one of the network devices and change the, uh, for, for example, the authentication of uh, authentication parameters or change the authentication timeouts or change, you know, something about the syslog, most of the configuration which normally, you know, the people or, or your admins, they don't really look at those, those pieces of the configuration and, but, but, uh, but they have some impacts. So you can create this kind of baseline configuration using Puppet and make sure the Puppet always checks the checks and verify the configuration and make sure that the correct configuration has been applied. So if Puppet finds a discrepancy in the in the configuration uh, on the device compared to the uh, to the compliance configuration, it will fix the configuration on its own without any without any issues. And if you have, you know, if you need to do lots of custom uh, automation ansible and especially python you know it it's it's make it's very flexible you can you can uh, send commands to any network device you can receive commands you can parse the outputs even if your network device doesn't is not supported in in those ansible uh modules which we have which we were showing like ntc ntc templates you can create your own parsing uh, method in python and you can send commands through to the network device receive them uh, in the buffer and start parsing those outputs you know so something like the, the full mac address table of the devices for doing verification or routing table or anything else you know it can be done using using python python is very very powerful and flexible you know for doing this kind of works so this was our uh, network automation demo uh, which we covered for puppet and ansible uh, if you have any question please write in the forum or you can contact me directly thank you very much